Hello. Yes, it's Karen. Um, it's time to prepare our evening meal. And I thought there's not a reason why I shouldn't show you what we have for our our tea every day. Up here in Yorkshire, we, we still call it tea. <laughs> um, I think it's dinner, isn't it? But whatever you call it, it's what you have about six, half past six of an evening, I think. <clears throat> now, last week, I used stew beef um, in the video to make a beef bourguignon and I mentioned then that most countries have their own version of what we call here stew that was beef bourguignon for France this week when we're going to Hungary um, often popular also in, in Czechoslovakia and, and Germany because it's all sort of close but we're going to Hungary and we're going to have goulash and it's really just a version of a stew and it's just exactly the same process as we did for the beef bourguignon in that I'm going to cook it in the slow cooker because it takes a long time to cook stew beef down and it's more economical if you have one of these crock pot affairs to use it. If not, pop it in your conventional oven it takes a couple of hours or on the hob, again a couple of hours till the meat's tender and then you know it's done. Well, this way I can put it in and get on with other things. Of course, we, we, we're not going anywhere at the moment because we're all staying home and staying safe. But I, have all, I can always find plenty of stuff to do. You know, there's some good programmes on the television. My sock drawer needs, needs to sort out, that's for sure. I'm putting one tablespoon of vegetable oil into a frying pan. What I'm doing first is to sear the meat. I just want to make sure that that's taken on a little bit of colour and I add some flour to it. The flour will thicken the goulash, in this case goulash, whatever stew it is, it will thicken it because I don't want to be using um, any sort of granules because you might not have them in but hopefully you've got a squeeze of flour and there's just a, a, a tablespoon or so in there. Now I can, see, I can feel this heat so I'm just popping it on. Normally you would, to do it properly you'll just do it in small batches because you don't really want the, if there's too much meat in the, in the frying pan, then it will steam rather than brown. But the speed, whoa, that's going, isn't it? That's going some. Straight away, it really only takes no time, a minute, just to get a bit of colour going onto that. I put in there about 450 grams of um, stew meat, the smaller packs that you get in the supermarket. Um, and so we're going to have this for our dinner tonight. And if I didn't have it for the dinner, it would be fine to reheat it tomorrow. If you get to a point where you need to use the meat up because it's on date, cook it and then you can pop it, cool it down and pop it in your fridge. Or you can even freeze it and, and have it another day. So I'm going to add the flour to this now. Now it will stick to the pan a bit, but I'm not fussed. Taking the lid off the cooker. Going in there. So I'm just going to sprinkle that flour over the top. Some people put it on the meat before they cook it, the flour. Um, and it makes no difference whatsoever. It's going to be the same principle. It's going to stick to the meat. And then when it's in the cooker, when we've got liquid, then it will thicken the whole lot. Just a bit more. Like so. Lovely. Okay. So I'm going to unplug that. That. Okay. So, yeah, um, what's going in first? Good old onion. We always start our dishes, well, I do pretty much. My husband says, oh, onions again. I said, well, yeah, that's it. They make the flavour. So that's going in the bottom there. And additionally, in goulash, they, they use peppers. You think of peppers being Mediterranean, well, I do. But they do use peppers in goulash um, quite most recipes have them. This is about one, one and a half. Any colour's fine, whatever you've got. Popping those in there. Kind of throw the meat on it. Like so. And pop that down. 
I've got two cloves of garlic. Garlic, garlic again. I know I say it every time. If you don't like garlic, don't use garlic. Use as much or as little as you feel in whatever format. If it's paste or powder, this is fresh. It's going in. So it's so easy. This, I mean, they are aren't they, these these slow cooking recipes. Let's throw it all in the pan and go. So just stir that around. So to cook it liquid wise, it's always tomato based goulashes. I have in my mitts a precious um, tin of tomatoes. I have to say, if you didn't have any tin tomatoes, because they are as scarce as hen's teeth, you could use, because this is not so scarce, you could use some puree and as many fresh tomatoes as you wanted to and some extra stock into there. So it would be the same difference, whatever you've got. But it should be tomato. But I say I'm lucky. That's going in the pot. And I have got some. I've got some beef stock. About about 300 millilitres. I'm going to pop some of that in now. I won't put it all in. I'm going to see how it goes. I can always add some more later on in the afternoon as it's cooking. It's got all the juicy stuff at the bottom. So I'm just going to leave that to one side and just, just see, see how you think. And that's it. And the only thing left to do now is to put the seasoning in. And this time, I don't mean just salt and pepper. It's got to be, it's got to be paprika, really. It's, it's to make a goulash, it, we need paprika. But there's lots of different sorts uh, out there. You need about a tablespoon, more if you want. I've got three sorts, but what any old paprika. I've got my favourite, tiny bit left smoked so well, i'm popping that in so that's about a table a teaspoon but about a, about a good tablespoon this is hot paprika so it'll be from a different sort of peppery thing put that in and this is standard paprika and again i can add more of this later if i taste and i think oh it could do with a bit more um you can't take it out obviously it'd be very difficult so i'm stirring that through and then I have, again, not everybody has these in the cupboards, but because I'm me and I'm a bit of a, a spice and herb nerd, I've got some caraway seeds. Oh, they've got the reduced label on from Sainsbury's. <laughs> anyway, traditionally you would have some caraway in there, but you know, loads of recipes don't use it. So don't worry, but I'm just putting a, a sprinkling in there. Again, if you don't have chilli or you don't want chilli, you can add chilli. I'm popping a little bit in, a few flakes, and some salt and pepper. Heavy on the pepper, light on the salt. That's what I say. So always add it later. And I'm going to stir that for good measure. I shall attempt to show it to the camera. There we go. That's the uncooked goulash. I'm going to pop the lid on. I'm going to fire it up. Um, usually for four or five hours, I will leave that there, keeping my eye on it. Adding more liquid if I feel necessary. Adding more seasoning if I feel necessary. And that's, that's it. That's beef goulash. I will be coming back to it and I will show you the finished dish. Serve it with well, various things, mashed potato, jacket potato, rice, noodles. They do a lot of pasta noodles um, over that way in Europe. You could have it with chips. Half and half. But there we go. That's Hungarian goulash. Look forward to seeing it myself later, but that's it, as easy as can be. So, in the meantime, stay safe, stay home, and a good afternoon. Bye for now. Okay, right, hello again. Uh, back, back to it. We've got the goulash, it's ready. And I've made a decision about what to serve it with. You know, as I said, um, chips and rice. I'm going to do a bit of rice because I like rice. John, like he doesn't like pasta, he doesn't like rice, unless it's a rice pudding. So I'm going to do a bit of each. And I'll be serving it later. And I will take a photograph.
but it might be dark by the time we get around to eating it. But I wanted to show you, so I've got, I've got a serving dish ready, and then um, that's too hot to handle, because it's real time this. So I've got my ladle, it's thickened up, because do you remember we put the flour into the, well, what to do, I'm going to pop that there, no, okay. I'm back, sorry about that. Small delay, balancing uh, the spoon on a pan lid. <laughs> anyway, back to it. So this is the Hungarian goulash that we prepared earlier. It's just exactly as it should be, in my opinion, which is thick because of the flour, tomatoey because of the tomatoes, and um, slightly spicy because of the paprika. And it's exactly the right consistency and colour, as you can see. I'm sure you agree with me. Now, I was thinking earlier on, while I was waiting for it to cook, in actual fact, traditionally, this would be served with a dollop of um, sour cream. I have not got any sour cream in the house, but I did have, and have found, this is for another recipe coming up. But it's quark. Quark, quark. Beloved of Slimming World members. This is um, a dairy, but it's very low fat. It will probably curdle if I put it in there now. But I'm going to just, so I'm not stirring it in. I'll just show you. So what you do is pop that on there. It looks like a bit of ice cream, but it's, it, it, it would go through. And what I found in the garden, we've only got a tiny garden, it's like a handkerchief. But last year we did plant some um, some herbs and they've come back. This time it's chives, obviously. This is just for fancy pants. You don't need these. Yes, part of the onion uh, family. But just because I've got them, I'm just going to snip. Love it. Love it. It's a bit chef. -y. As you know, I'm not a chef. I've no training whatsoever. Like most of us, you just make it up as you go along with these dishes. But you must admit, it adds, I don't know what the Hungarian for je ne sais quoi is. That's cringe. But that is the Hungarian goulash. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. So make it. You saw how easy it was. I'm going to take a photograph later before we eat it with the chips. Well, actually, they're not chips. They're wedges. And uh, homemade potatoes cut up, you know, a bit of, bit of oil, a bit of spice, a bit of salt, and some rice. And that's it. Okay. Um, Hungarian, I don't know any of it, but... Um, Ciao.